hi everyone uh, welcome back to this channel today we will be looking at a very phenomenal data structure called a queue a queue is very phenomenal uh, in my opinion because it is applied not only in computer science but in uh, the non-technical world I mean think of people uh, lining up to purchase a ticket that is a non-technical use case for a queue and technically, uh, a queue is used to handle requests sent to you know, servers or jobs waiting to be processed in the operating system. Okay, so you can see that uh, the a queue data structure has lots of uh, use cases. All right, so this is part one. So please subscribe to stay notified so that um, I mean you can follow the video as I upload new ones. Without any further ado, we move. So here is an outline of what we are going to be looking at um, in this series. So first, we're going to be looking at a discussion about queues. So what is a queue? Uh, what are the terminologies used when it comes to a queue? When and where is queue used? Uh, you know, the complexity analysis. And uh, also, we're going to be using a queue to implement a breadth-first search algorithm for a graph. That is a very, very interesting problem, and I'm sure you you will also find that very interesting actually okay so in the second part of this uh, series we are going to be looking at uh, the implementation details of the queue so how do you enqueue how do you dequeue and, and other operations performed uh, on the queue and finally we are going to be looking at a code implementation of a queue so how can you implement a queue from scratch using code okay So what is a queue? A queue is a linear or sequential data structure that models a real-world queue by having two primary operations, namely any queue and the queue. Okay. So let me just explain uh, that to you so that you can understand it. All right. So if you check out this um, diagram over here, we have this set of boxes, right? And um, we have the queue back and the queue front okay so whenever we want to add a new box we add it from the back as you can see over here okay and whenever we want to evict or remove a box we do that from the front okay so a queue is a kind of data structure where you add elements from the back and you remove elements from the front okay so that is uh, kind of a simple Way you can understand a queue some people call that uh, that order the uh, the first in first out order okay so the first element that enters the queue is the first element that will leave the queue so that is what a queue is all right so now let's take a look at the terminologies used when it comes to a queue okay so we have two uh, terms here which uh, which are we have the DQ and we have NQ. So these are two terms that we use when it comes to a queue. So what does it mean to uh, to NQ? Okay. So to NQ means you add an element uh, from the back of a queue. So that's the meaning of an NQ, uh, an enqueued operation. However, uh, this can also be called adding or offering a queue. Okay, so you can say you can say that um, you added a new element to uh, the queue, or you can say you offered a new element to the queue. So those terms uh, means the same thing. Okay, so you can see diagram over here. All right. So uh, another terminology that we use is the queue. Okay, so the queue just means that um, you remove uh, an element from the front of uh, the queue. Okay. So take note that this can also be called polling, okay? So I can say that uh, I polled one element from the queue. That will mean the same thing as saying I dequeued an element, okay? So that is uh, those are the two terms that we use when it comes to a queue.
okay so now let's take a look at how uh, the queue operates so we have this set of instructions and we want to see how uh, it will be performed on a queue so the first one is NQ. by the way we have the front of the queue here and we have the back of the queue over here so the first thing we want to do is to NQ 10 so this means that we're going to be adding 10 to the back of the queue like this okay then the next up uh, instruction is the queue so we're going to we're going to remove the uh the element at the front of the queue like this okay we also have uh the queue again right so we're going to remove the element at the front of the queue right so now we are moving to um any queue this means that we are going to be adding five to the back of the queue like this and now we have the queue uh, meaning that uh, we want to remove the element at the front of the queue so like this and finally we have NQ we want to NQ 8 right so that's going to add 8 to the back of the queue so I believe this should give you um, uh, the understanding of how a queue operates so when and where is a queue used it is one thing to understand what a queue is and it is another thing to understand where and when it can be applied okay so the first one here is that any waiting line models a queue for example a ticket purchase line so does this look familiar right so let's say you want to withdraw money at an atm machine this is kind of like the arrangement for orderliness right or you want to purchase a ticket this is the arrangement so this is an example of a queue model okay the second example here is that a queue is used uh for web servers request management where you want to process requests as first come first serve okay so i have an example here that would help you understand this better so let's assume you have a twitter server so this is a Twitter server that handles tweets, okay, and it has a limit of four. So it can only process four requests concurrently at the same time. All right. So let's assume we have uh, we have eight clients, okay, and these eight clients are football fans, okay. So they love football. So let's assume uh, Ronaldo scores a goal uh, during a football match. And all of them tweeted goal, like you know, the way we shout goal when a, somebody scores a, a ball, a goal, right? So they all tweeted goal. Now, uh, the total request here is eight, right? And the limit of the Twitter server is four. So there is something to handle here, right? So there is a kind of uh, a threshold exceeding, uh, being exceeded here right so the first approach is to undo the first four requests and reject the rest so you undo the first four tweets right and you reject the rest and that is what is happening over here as you can see okay but is this the best approach can we have a better approach to this that is where a queue comes in okay so the second approach is to handle the first four requests and store pending requests in a queue okay so by the by the time the first four clients sends their request okay it will be handled concurrently by the twitter server while uh for clients from client five to eight which are the other four set of clients that sent requests their requests will be will be sent to a queue okay so this queue will store their request temporarily right so it's gonna be in a pending state okay so let's assume tweet one was completed or let's assume uh, the request by this client which is tweet one has been processed completely okay so now the server is handling four requests concurrently so it can take in one more request right because um the limit is four and it's currently handling three requests so it can still add one more Right, so it can 
dequeue this request, request 5, and process it like this. Okay? So, like that, uh, the server will be able to handle all the requests. Okay? It's, it's going to be processing some, while others in pending state will be stored in a queue. So, this is one way uh, that a queue can be applied. You can see that this is kind of a very beautiful example uh, in, you know, in the computer science world. Okay, so the third uh, use case for a queue is that it is used to efficiently keep track of X most recently added elements. Okay, so uh, this means that you can actually uh, have a queue where you uh, store some elements, right, and you give that queue a size, right. So whenever the size is uh, is exceeded, you dequeue the element at the front and you add the latest element. From the back so like that you have uh, a queue of the most recent recently added element okay and the fourth use case of a queue which is also a very very phenomenal uh, use case of a queue is that it is used in the breadth first search graph traversal okay so I'm gonna be having a whole video session on this that's gonna be the next video where I'm gonna explain how you can use a queue to you know implement this um, algorithm Okay, so now let's take a look at the complexity analysis of uh, a queue. So to enqueue, meaning to add elements to the back of the queue, it takes a constant time, okay? To dequeue, meaning to remove from the front, right? It's also constant, okay? And I'm assuming uh, dequeue is impl implemented using a singly linked list, okay? So that is my assumption here. Okay, then picking, meaning you want to check out the element at the front of the queue. Okay, it's also a, const in, uh, a constant time. To check if the queue contains an element, it takes a linear time because you have to traverse the entire queue uh, to find out, you know, in the worst case, you have to traverse the entire queue to find an element, right? Also, to remove an element from a queue, it takes a linear time. Because you might not want to remove from the front, okay? You might want to remove from the center, right? And that takes a linear time. Then uh, the last uh, operation here is the is empty operation. This helps to check if the queue is empty. And that happens in a constant time, okay? It's just a single operation, okay? So um, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you how you can use the queue data structure to implement uh, a breadth-first search algorithm. Okay, it's going to be a wonderful session. So please uh, don't forget to subscribe. It is very, very important so that you can be notified when this video comes out. And I will be, also, I will be very, very glad um, if you like this video and if you comment. Uh, I'll be very, very glad. Okay, so thank, thank you everyone and see you in the next video. Bye.